Good evening. Welcome to our Hanging of the Greens. Would you join me in prayer, please? Father, we come before you this night to celebrate the season of the birth of your son. We are not going to get legalistic about the day. We're going to worship about what happened. You sent your one and only son to be born of a virgin, to walk this earth, to suffer and die for us, that one day we might spend eternity with him. So as we celebrate this time, Father, the lighting of the lights, the symbolisms of the greenery and the poinsettias, may it all be focused on one thing, the day your son came. We ask this in your name. Amen. Christmas, the greatest of all festivals, is celebrated over the modern world through the observance of both religious and secular customs, which are a heritage of many centuries. The story of the nativity has inspired songs, legends, and beliefs, which are now the background of the Christmas season. All this serves to enhance the story of Christmas as the birth of our Lord and Savior. Christians have taken the most meaningful and appealing things from the beliefs which existed before Christianity and endowed them with a new spirit. The customs were changed very little, but the spirit was new. And because of this new spirit, the spirit of God's gift to man, the customs took on new beauty and the meaning, a new meaning and sacred truth. Our hanging of the green service is, in a sense, the formal opening of the Christmas season in our fellowship, preparing our hearts by scriptures, songs, and prayer, along with the beautiful decorations for the full and proper appreciation of the greatest season of the year. It puts into proper setting and correct focus all the traditions and lovely customs associated with Christmas. Let us enter into this service with serenity of heart and eagerness of spirit, let us rise to the high tone of the hour, the hanging of the greens. Come, let us hang the greens. Let every man be jolly, every room with ivy leaves is dressed, and every post with holly. Luke 2, 10 through 14. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Of all Christmas symbols, none is more familiar than the evergreens. Its use during the season is common throughout the world, and both as a simple decoration and the, as the Christmas tree. Long before the birth of Christ, evergreens were used as an emblem of eternal life. Now, as a Christian symbol, the evergreen reminds us of Jesus Christ, who is indeed eternal life. The Bible says, 1 John 5, 11 and 12, And the witness is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And he who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. By receiving Jesus Christ, we have new life, eternal life, abundant life. O come all ye faithful is one of the best known Christmas carols it should be sung with the joy of salvation and the joy of everlasting life. Join us sing. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him.
Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call him and she will call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 18 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and was not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for what which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall be bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. The pulpit is essential of our worship services. It is the pulpit that God's word is read to us and his message proclaimed to us. Of all that is spoken from this pulpit, the most important message is that Jesus Christ. One of the names given to Jesus is the both Old Testament and in the New Testament name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. The Apostle Paul, God was in Christ, reconciling the word unto himself. Once since we believe in Jesus Christ and receive him into our hearts, we have God with us. And God's promise is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. A very old carol, O come, O come, Emmanuel, expressed the longing of the human heart known God personally. Join me in singing the chorus, Rejoice, Rejoice.
Psalm 95, 1. O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Psalm 96, 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Psalm 98, 1 through 2. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Psalm 104, 33. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Music is so richly interwoven with the history and tradition of Christmas that it provides one of the greatest joys of the celebration. Christmas began with a song. When the birth announcement of Jesus Christ was given, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Christians have been singing the same good news in hymns, anthems, and gospel songs ever since the angels sang that first Christmas. One of our finest holiday customs is singing Christmas carols. Hebrews 7, 26 and 27. For it, is, it, for it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. Because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Hebrews 9, 26. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the earth. But now once on the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. As we decorate the altar, we are reminded of the supreme sacrifice that the Lamb without blemish made in order that we might have newness of life. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. The Bible says that Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. Now we have the opportunity of coming to the altar to lay before him our life and all that we are as an expression of love and devotion to him. Psalms 22:25 says, From thee comes my praise in the great assembly. I shall pay my vows before those who fear him. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and 8, Let each one do just as he has purposed in his heart not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, that always, having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. Sing Gloria, Gloria.
Psalms 66, 1 and 2. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praises glorious. Psalms 67, 1 through 2. God, God be gracious to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah, that thy way may be known on the earth, thy salvation among all nations. Psalms 81, 1 through 2. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, strike the timbrel, the sweet sound, lyre with the harp. Psalms 98, 2 through 4. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have been seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. For centuries, the bells of the church of every land have pealed forth the glad tidings of the birth of Jesus. In Bethlehem, the city of the Nativity, it has become tradition to usher in Christmas Eve by the ringing of the bells. As their tones float out of the air and over the countryside, they are a reminder, as were the voices of the angelic host so long ago, that Christ is born. It was 1864 when Henry, when Henry Wadsworth Longsfellow wrote a poem entitled Christmas Bell. The Civil War was still in progress at the time, and the Christmas bells reminded the poet of the hope of peace on earth. The first stanza of the poem reads, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Psalm 18, 28, For thou dost light my lamp. The Lord my God illuminates my darkness. Isaiah 9, 2, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. John 1, 4 and 5, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John 8, 12. Again, therefore Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. In Matthew 5, 14a and 16. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Ever since the Magi were guided by the stars to where Jesus was, the Christmas celebration has included the use of lights. The Christian use of candles reminds us of Christ as the light of the world. As the light of the world, Jesus not only illuminates our own spiritual darkness, but when we receive Christ as our Savior, we become lights in the world, and the light of his life is seen through us. Shining, it is the night of the 
Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, the yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We do praise the Lord. We praise him for leaving the glories of heaven to give himself for us and to us. We praise him for his virgin birth, his sinless life, his atoning death, his triumphant resurrection, his glorious ascension, and his promised return. Christmas is the season of praise. We come here tonight to express our praise to God for giving us His one and only Son. As we leave this place, may the Spirit of Christ lead us to share the joy we have felt and the good news we have heard with others. And that's what the season is about. Spreading the joy and the good news. And as you look around, I challenge you to say this is anything but spiritual tonight. Not secular, not worldly, but beyond the world. From the creator of the world. And everything done and said, tied back to the scriptures. That's what it's about. To say that we have experienced a joy-filled night in God's house is what it's all about. That we may leave, we may go out into the fellowship and do just that. Fellowship with one another. So join me as we pray, and then let's go out and fellowship. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the blessings of reminding us what this season is about. No commercialization here. It's just all about the birth of Christ. As we lit the lights, that he is the light of the world, that the evergreens, or even anything that might mildly resemble the world father is all from you so let us never forget what this night is about the beginning of celebration of the savior of the world may we go out into the fellowship we bless those who have prepared the food to strengthen our bodies may laughter fill your house father 
And then as we leave, may we joyfully leave, shining your light upon a dark world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. And the body of Christ said, Amen. Senior adults and guests, please go first. We'll let our members and our children and youth go last. God bless you. to the world, the last song, and then we live with a joy.
Birdsong. 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 Birds